Yes, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to GEA Fan TV. My name is Aaron. Back again, of course, with all the weekend's club results. There's a lot that happened at the weekend, I have to say. A lot of results that happened. A lot of surprises, a lot of shocks, a lot of wonderfully, beautifully brilliant games in both Gaelic football and hurling to speak about. A lot of, a few different news stories as well. A couple of players, you know, big players are going to be injured coming up to their inter-county season or the All-Ireland Championship season if it does actually go ahead. Obviously, there's been a lot of developments in the past week or so in regards to the whole coronavirus situation i mean you have a couple of clubs who are shutting down uh, counties are going into lockdown and there's just a lot of confusion a lot of craziness going on at the moment all across the board in both gaelic football and hurling we'll run through all the results all the reaction coming up in today's video Okay, so I suppose we'll start things off by looking at the results on Wednesday of last week. So we'll actually start off by talking about Gaelic football. And there was a couple of games that took place on Wednesday last week. And that was in the Dublin Football Championship. A lot of games that took place in the Dublin Football Championship. A couple of surprise results. A couple of results maybe that some people weren't expecting. But if we have a look here, we'll have a look at Group 1 first of all. So as we can see, Round Towers of Lusk uh, losing to Ballymun Kickhams. Ballymun Kickhams looking very impressive at the moment in the Dublin Football Championship. That's two wins from two now. They've scored three goals in each game. And I think they've hit over 20 points in each game as well. So looking very, very convincing indeed. Indeed. Scary Tarps getting a surprise win there over Thomas Davis. Thomas Davis, of course, the runners up in the Dublin Football Championship last season, losing to Scary's Harps. Interesting enough, there was a goal in the game for Thomas Davis that was actually ruled out because one of the players didn't have his gum shield in. Definitely a first. I don't even think a lot of people even knew that that was actually a rule. It is, and the player didn't have a gum shield, and so the goal was chalked off. And that was in the early stages as well, when Thomas Davis would have been six points in front, I believe. Interesting enough to see that happen, and Scary's Harps do have a couple of young players coming through i know kieran archer is a very young talented dublin footballer i've spoke a bit about him on this channel before and he is a scaries man as far as i'm aware i'm not too sure if he's involved in this game he might still be playing at under 20 or minor level in the club scene but nonetheless scaries do have a couple of good young players coming through so it's not that big of a surprise whereas the most people are probably would be but to me i know scaries have a good few players coming through there so it's not that big of a surprise if we move on to group two so nafina got a very good win over luke and sarsfields St. Jude's got a six point win over Ballantyre. And then uh, in group three, as you can see here, Clontarf beating Whitehall, Calm Kill. Also wins here for Ballyboden, St. Enders over Vincent's. Had a close eye on that game. Colin Baskell, two very good goals. Ballyboden, St. Enders are looking very good at the moment. They're a very explosive team. They get in behind the uh, fullback line on multiple occasions. They score so many goals, you know, four goals in the first game, five goals in the second game. And they are the favorites to win this at the moment. I think it's between them and Ballymun, in my opinion, really the two standout teams to win the Dublin Football Championship. I suppose if we move on to Group 4, I mean, we can't take anything away from Kilmacud Croaks either. They'll certainly be knocking on the door as well. A 320 to 308 win over Oliver Plunkett's. And then also in the other game, Rahini got a win over Castle Knock. Now, Castle Knock, GEA, were actually streaming the game through their Instagram, so I've seen it a little bit. And interesting enough, Castle Knock actually had a goal ruled out in the second half. I actually have no idea why the goal was ruled out. I think it may have been a square ball or it may have been a foul in the build-up, but the goal was chalked off and it was ruled out. From what I've seen, Rahini just look, looked a little bit better in possession. They retain possession a lot more, especially when you've got a midfielder like Brian Fenton in that team. It's going to be very difficult to really try and slow that Rahini team down when they have possession on the ball. I feel like they utilised their strengths a lot more than in the previous game when, you know, Kilmacud Croaks handed them an absolute beating. And of course, Castlenock did get a goal late on. There was a, a long ball that was played in and one of the Castlenock forwards uh, got in front of the goalkeeper and basically fisted it past them and it was a nice finish. But in the end Rahini were the ones who got over the line with a three-point victory okay and moving on to the Kerry football championship now obviously I made a video on Friday looking at Kenmare Shamrocks versus Dr. Croaks I'd go as far as to say that it's one of it's probably the best game I've seen this year in all honesty it was just unbelievable football from these two clubs it was just perfect well worth the fiver well worth watching the game you know I knew obviously there was a game going on in Tina G4 that was taking place of course between St. Eunan 
Legends kill Car, but I just had a feeling that this game was going to be you know, one of the games of the year, and absolutely it was. It was an extraordinary game, and we'll have a look at some Twitter reactions later, because I know a lot of you lads were looking at that game as well. Karen's O'Rahley's got a win as well over Temple No, so Connor Hayes got an early goal in that game, and that proved to be the difference for Karen's O'Rahley's getting a win. Austin Stacks also got a win over Killarney Legion. James O'Donoghue was actually sent off for Killarney in that one, so that's interestingly enough to hear. And Dingle also got a win over uh, Kilmullen, so, or Kilcummon, I should say. Into the Donegal Football Championship then, so Kilgar, Kilcar and St. Eunan's. As I said before, I went back and rewatched the game. Not the best game, in, in all honesty, not the best game of football to watch. So in the first half, Kilcar were certainly more in control. They were better in possession, and Paddy McBrewty was getting away from his man on far too many occasions. Got himself a nice goal, hitting 1-4 in total in the game, as a matter of fact. And, you know, in the end, St. Eunan's managed to turn it around late on interestingly enough and actually as a matter of fact um, Kilcar didn't even hit a, a point in the final 20 minutes of the game which is kind of a crazy statistic I believe there were seven points up at the start of the second half and it wasn't like St. Eunan's you know massively turned it around and played extraordinary it was just as a matter of fact that Kilcar just seemed to let the game slip when they had more than one occasion to wrap up the game and win it quite comfortably okay so as always in these videos we have a look at some stats from GEA Statsman and here what we're doing is we're having a look at St. Unions and Kilcar, like as I was saying, and um, you know, an interesting point we're pointing out there as we have a look at these stats is I mean, if we just kind of focus in on the shots from play from Kilcar, so 19 shots in total, which was actually more than St. St. Unions, but just a 36% conversion rate, seven shots from 19. So, certainly, Kilcar missing a lot of easy chances, especially in that second half, as I was saying, you know, in the final 20 minutes, they had a lot of opportunities to wrap this game up, and they didn't happen to do so uh, interestingly enough i mean they won 16 of their uh, 17 or they won 17 of their 18 kickouts they only lost one of their own kickouts which is uh, which is interesting enough and actually st unions on the other hand side um, actually only lost four of their own kickouts so i think both teams were playing the short kickout a lot of the time and that was one of the reasons for that and yeah of course we have a look at the scores here as i was saying so paddy McBurthy with one four connor o'doherty or connor doherty with two points of course if we have a look at um, st unions so podrick McGee Gettigan with 1-1, one, one, that late goal of course, crucial for St. Eunan's. Niall O'Donnell with 3 points, Owen McGeehan with 2 points, Peter McAniff with 1 point. Some other results of course worth mentioning in the Donegal Football Championship, so there was a 16 point win for Godobar over Killy Begg, 16 points. They won by quite a statement indeed with Oren McNeilis and Keane Mulligan on target with goals in the game to get a comfortable win for Godobar in the end. And also in some other results, so there were also wins for Glenn and Finn, so they got a comfortable comfortable win over St. Nalls by six points. There was also a win for St. Michael's over Milford. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Colin McFadden hit 1-9 in that game for St. Michael's, so what an impressive performance by Colin McFadden in that game. Of course, Colin McFadden, one of the Donegal legends from their 2012 All-Ireland success. There was also a win for Bundoran, so they got a six-point win over Thermon, so good result from them as well. Okay, if we move on to the Monaghan Football Championship, so there was a win for Scottstown over Carrick Macross. Uh, Carrick Macross, who of course uh, produced one of these shocks last weekend when they beat Castle Blaney, but Scottstown got the win this time, and Trua also got a very comfortable win over Baton. So interestingly enough, actually, uh, Scottstown and Trua, I actually watched that game um, a couple of weeks back. Scottstown actually streamed it on their YouTube channel, so I went back and rewatched the game, and it was a very interesting game indeed when them two played each other, and in particular, Darren Hughes was very impressive indeed, and you know, if, if Scottstown can get the best out of him, the best out of Rory Began, um, some other very notable players in there as well, but in particular Darren Hughes, I feel like he could be the, the real target man for Scottstown in terms of being their top player. So interestingly enough, they got a very comfortable win over Carrick Macross, like I was saying, and Trua got a win as well. And Trua, to be fair, in that game versus Scottstown, it was actually very close when they two played each other as well. Trua were actually looking like they were going to win the game until the closing minutes, and then I believe I think they got a player sent off, or they got a black card, and then Scottstown were able to capitalise in the closing minutes to get the win. A couple of results worth mentioning then in 
the Mayo Football Championship then if we have a look here. So Ahamor got a six point win over Davids, 12 points. So 18 points to 12 in that one. Also a win for Ballon Tubber, very comfortable win over Moy Davids at 319 to 107. Balladarine, uh, it was a close game with Gary Moore in the end. Balladarine, probably a lot of people feel they'll be the closest challengers to Ballon Tubber. And they actually only won that game by a point in the end over Gary Moore. So it was pretty close. Westport and Charlestown played out a draw. I think a lot of people would have felt Westport would have won this one quite comfortably. But actually in the end, it ended up as a draw 2-10 each in fact. Some other results around the country then. So there was wins for Cavan Gales, top team in Cavan down the year. So they got a result there as well. Brat New also beat Blessington after extra time in the Wicklow Football Championship. Very close game, very close between them two. And it was meant to be a very entertaining game as well so Ratnew getting that victory with a point in the end in a game in extra time so very uh, interesting enough in that one the Armagh football championship kicked off at the weekend of course as well and there was wins from Madden so they got a four point win over Bally McNabb there was also a win from Mahiri over Drummondtree four point win and then Kalevi got a very comfortable win over Grange as well so the Armagh football championship kicking off and getting away of course they'll have a close eye on Cross McGlen Rangers because they have a lot of very talented young players that I feel like could have have an interesting championship season for Armagh when it does come around. Okay, and then we move across to hurling and plenty of action taking place across hurling. Plenty of surprises, shocks, and quality games on display as well. And we'll start off with Limerick, where Kilmallock got a comfortable six-point win over Rahane. Graham Mulcahy and Michael Houlihan on target in this one. Uh, Graham Mulcahy in particular hitting 1-4. As a matter of fact, my man of the match was actually probably Tom Morrissey for Rahane. He actually hit 1-7, and only four of them were from placed balls so very impressive performance from Tom Morrissey and if we actually have a look at some stats here again so as you can see here with some of the stats so 14 points 14 of Kilmanic's 22 points were from play and interestingly enough they actually had so they actually had 38 shots in total in this game scoring 24 so a 63% conversion rate um, you know creating a lot of chances in this game a lot of opportunities in this game compared to a Hain who only uh, had 26 shots interesting enough they only scored 16 had they have been a little bit more clinical this could have been a closer game indeed of course just six points in the difference when it actually could have been a lot closer in reality some other results weren't mentioning then of course in uh, in Limerick so Patrick as well actually got a late draw with Dune of course this game was shown on RTE and it was an interesting game in fairness with Aaron Galan actually scoring late goal before Kevin O'Brien snatched a late point you know you feel bad for Dune in some ways they looked in control of this game it looked like it was going to be them to get over the line and get the victory but Patrick's well laid on snatching a late goal from Aaron Galan and then of course Kevin O'Brien with a crucial point as well to snatch the draw for Patrick's well when it looked like the game was getting away from them so then of course in Cork there was wins for Sarsfield so they beat Douglas by two points Liam Healy scoring 1-6 in that game Shane Kingston also hit 12 points for Douglas Liam Healy of course of Sarsfields and Alan Cadigan also scored a late goal as well for Douglas but in the end Sarsfield managed to hang on and get the two point victory if we move across then to the Tipperary Championship. So Boris Lee got a comfortable win over uh, Burgess. There was also a win there for Kilrowan over Moikarki and Upper Church and Tumavara also played out a draw. Tumavara's second draw of the campaign. They also drew with Boris Lee on the opening day as well. And then in the Waterford Hurling Championship, so Bally Gunner got an 11 point win over Passage and De La Salle actually got a six point win over Abbeyside as well. A couple of goals in that game from De La Salle proving to be the difference getting over the line and then in the Wexford Hurling Championship well there were certainly a couple of surprises in this one because Glyn Barntown got maybe the shock result of the weekend they actually beat the reigning champion St Martins who you know we we talked a bit about on this channel already with some of the players they have like Rory O'Connor and Jack O'Connor etc but Glyn Barntown got a shock six point win they beat the reigning champions Davy Clark and Michael O'Regan in defense gave a defensive masterclass they actually kept Rory O'Connor scoreless in the game and that was one of the main reasons why Glyn Barntown got over the line with the victory and Conor O'Mahony at the other end was significant up top for Glyn Barntown to get them the result and get them over the line. Um, in some other results in the in the Waterford or in the Wexford Hurling Championship so Ullart de Balag also got a win as well over St Anne's so St Anne's were the beaten finalists last year so interesting enough going into the Wexford Hurling Championship semi-finals we won't have any of last year's finalists so Ullart de Balag there with a 214 to 112 win 
over St. Anne's. I knew Laird the Blag, interesting enough, as we were saying, in that game versus um, versus St. Martin's in the first game. You know, looked very impressive in front of goal. It was just defensively, they let themselves down a bit. They looked like they've rectified a lot of those defensive issues. Getting that win, they might just be the favourites now to go the entire way. Shell Mailer is there with a victory over Faith Harrier. So, interestingly enough, Lee Chin missed the penalty for Faith Harriers in that game. And, um, you know, a good win for, for Shell Mailer. Also, a win for Navena as well. 117 to 13 points. Navena have kind of been the not a lot of people talking about them in the Wexford Hurling Championship. But they've gone gone about their business very well, and you know could be one of the dark horses to go the entire way. Now that now that obviously St Martins are not there, St Anne's aren't there either. So it will be interesting to see how, of course, it all plays out. But they were the results in the Wexford Hurling Championship. Okay, and now we'll move across to the Dublin Hurling Championship. We'll have a look on screen at some of the results here now. So there were two draws in the games in Group One. So St Vincent's and Luke and Sarsfields both playing out a 117 draw and Ballantyre St. John's and St. Oliver Plunkett's both drawing in that game as well. In group two, Kilmacud Croaks continued their impressive season so far. 323 to 19 over Scully Cunnell and also a win for Bally Bowden, getting a win over Crave Kieran, a 10-point victory. Also, of course, in group three, if we have a look here, so Foss got a victory over St. Bridges by two points, and Whitehall narrowly missed out to St. Jude's, losing by a point harsh on Whitehall because they would have got through to the quarterfinals had they have even got a draw in that game and actually as a matter of fact both of those two teams went out they didn't have enough to catch St. Bridget's or Foz in that one. Group 4 another real surprising shock Nafina with a very impressive win over Kula. Kula of course the current champions one of the best club teams probably in the country and certainly in Dublin and Kula getting getting defeated by Nafina and quite comfortably as well a 6 point win for Nafina and interesting enough Nafina not normally known for their hurling prowess you know normally more known as a Gaelic football side as such to say with some of the players they've produced down the years but they've they've gone ahead and, and got a victory over Kula there so fair play to Nafina also a draw between Satanta and Thomas Davis as well 117 apiece and then of course as a result the quarterfinal draw was made for the Senior Hurling Championship and as we can see here St. Vincent's taking on Bally Bowden St. Dendas Kilmacud Croaks versus Luke and Sarsfields St. Bridget's versus Kula and Nafina versus Foss so a very interesting one taking place there Kilmacud Kilmacud Croaks and Kula probably the favourites but I think the FINA have put themselves into big contention with that victory as well and it will be very interesting to see how they can go on especially you know if they were to play Kula again and, and to see how that game would go but interesting enough the FINA looking very bright as well and obviously Kula, Kilmacud Croaks and probably Bally Bowden you'd have to say looking pretty decent as well. Okay so now we'll get into the part of the video where we look at some of your uh, reactions of course on Twitter definitely a lot of uh, reaction taking place from a lot of the club games and we'll actually start off with the game of course between Ken Mayer and um, Dr. Croaks that obviously took place so as, you, as we can see here this came here from Chris Mack so it says one of the best fibers I have ever spent watching Ken Mayer Shamrocks be Dr. Croaks great, great coverage from Sport Bio and commentary from Sean the Bond and Gary O'Sullivan and what a setting and absolutely you know what a game that was between those two clubs you know fantastic weather conditions you know a great backdrop of the mountains and the water and everything else I've never been to Ken Mayer I would say Certainly love to go there because um, just looks like quite a beautiful place, beautiful football. Just everything was just fantastic. You couldn't ask for much more than a display of brilliance like that, especially with the late drama of Sean O'Shea's point as well. It was just absolutely fantastic. Alan C says here, so what a performance from Ken Mayer GEA. Dug in deep when needed and never gave up. Serious bunch of players. There'll be some value on a county final ticket in Ken Mayer. Yeah, I mean, and they always seem to turn it around as well. You know, getting that late turnaround versus Temple No, and then. Doing doing the same in this game as well. Who knows, it might just be their year. Ken Mayer actually put out a tweet themselves as well and they said, we bloody went and did it. What a game, both sides played. That, that is what GEA is all about. Well done lads, so proud of you. Absolutely, you know, they, they can be very proud of their team tonight for turning it around when it looked like they were beaten. Um, it didn't look like they were gonna get that point at the end. You know, as the minutes rolled on and we went into the fifth, sixth and seventh minute of injury time, it didn't look like they were gonna get it. It looked like they were just gonna miss out and that this time there would be no late turnaround. In the end, they got the free and Sean O'Shea wasn't going to miss and they progressed through to the semi-finals, of course, and, you know, an extraordinary result that one was. This was a tweet here that came out from Bishopstown GEA, so breaking news, new addition to our starting team for tomorrow night's Junior A Football Championship. And for those of you who aren't aware, that is John Egan there with a Bishopstown jersey, of course. John Egan, actually of Kerry, I believe, but for those of you who don't know who he is, he's a professional footballer for Sheffield United in the uh, English Premier League so and this here was from Claire 
there Hennessy who said probably the most positive outcome of modern day technology and GEA restrictions, granddad taking it all in. Very uh, good photo, great to see a lot of the elderly being able to actually watch these club games and actually be able to watch their clubs play. And you know, I think it's it has been one of the benefits out of all this you know craziness that has happened in 2020. At least people who wouldn't normally get to go to their club games or wouldn't normally get to go, at least they are able to watch these games in hospital or, or anything like that. So um, I think one of these photos and one of, the, one of these images uh, probably display what's good of what has happened in what has been a crazy year. So this tweet also came in here from El Ni. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say that. But he says, if you think that's box office, you should check out Podrick Swanee or Hora's interview. So this was replying to a tweet from Tommy Rooney. Yeah, let's just play this video because yeah, it, it's fairly quality stuff in all honesty. Let, let's have a listen. All or nothing when you play Knockmore in a couple of weeks. But any time Ban and I play Knockmore over the years, it's a, it's a right good battle. Are, are you dying to, to test yourselves against them? Yeah, yeah, we'll go out and beat them in two weeks. I love it. Any particular reason? No. <laughs> Just because? Just because. Is, is that the way the Stephen Ice now are looking at this championship? It doesn't matter who, no. where, when. That's, that's the mindset. Yeah beat anybody we come out against this year simple as yeah so as you can see there i mean Patrick o'hara just lays it out on the table you know just no holding back yeah we'll beat them in two weeks absolutely no bother great to hear great to see it you know it's nice to see that sometimes just players being completely honest the only problem for him is if if balana do go ahead and lose that game in two weeks time you know you feel like that that's one of them clips that gets played back you know what i mean that that's one of them things that gets chopped up i mean luckily enough ireland and club football and male football isn't that you know it's it's not it's not on a global scale spectrum so people probably won't do it but you know i mean look listen i think fair play to him he's being honest there he's laying it out on the table you know no not hold him back you can even see the uh, the interviewer there like literally being like whoa I, I did not expect that you know looking very confused but fair play to Padraig O'Hara there literally just being laying it all on the table saying what he believes is going to happen and and just being completely honest and i think fair play anyway guys that's going to be the end of the video do leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already i will of course um you know be continuing the videos coming in working on a couple of different exciting things behind the scenes as well for this channel as you can see the new microphone and everything else set up so hopefully in the next uh, coming weeks and coming months coming into the all ireland championship there'll be a lot of uh, content on this channel to look forward to the only thing i need from you lads is just to share it out to your friends family just so we can you know continue to grow to the channel continue pushing it out you know it is slowly grown we're slowly getting there of course rome was not built in a day so we will uh, we will be patient enough with it but but nonetheless, I do appreciate everyone who is watching, liking the videos, commenting, all that stuff. It does give me a lot of confidence to keep this going and improve and, and get better as the channel goes on as well. So, um, so yeah, lads, my name is Aaron. I will catch you all in the next video. Have a lovely week. Have a lovely Monday. And I'll see you later.